Hey, Mark, how you doing? Good morning and welcome to Lambton College, Toronto campus. We are more than happy to have you here with us this morning, this evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome. We are happy to have you as part of our family at Lambton College, Toronto. This morning, which is Toronto's time, we are going to start off with our director, Mr. Michael Verkas, who will welcome you to our orientation. Michael, it's over to you. Thanks a lot, Jim. Uh, welcome students, uh, welcome colleagues. Happy New Year, first of all, to all of you. And uh, thanks for choosing Lambton College in Toronto. It's exciting to have you here. We've been around since uh, the summer of 2011. We started with one program and 30 students, and uh, we currently have uh, 20 programs in business, health and technology at both the undergraduate and postgraduate level. And, uh, you know, we have new and returning students of close to 6,000. Uh, since summer of 2011, we've had over 15,000 graduates, so uh, it's from 50 countries. So uh, you've chosen a great college, you've chosen a great country. We welcome you here. And um, Canada is, uh, uh, you know, a great opportunity for you. And um, to be able to come to Canada, uh, study while you're studying online, uh, have the time credited towards your postgraduate uh, work permit, and uh, you know, be able to uh, get your uh, postgraduate work permit after two years of study in your program. So it's great. It's one of the few countries in the world that you can uh, study and get access to your postgraduate work permit, which gives you access to your permanent residency and hopefully Canadian citizenship. So we're really, really excited to have you. It's uh, the start of your journey. I know you've come thousands and thousands of kilometers away uh, to this cold country. And uh, some of you are here, some of you are on, uh, on, uh, in your country. You're, you're studying online in both uh, scenarios. So again, uh, welcome. <clears throat> We've grown from 30 students to 6,000 because we believe in continuous improvement. So when we look at continuous improvement, we look at our five major stakeholders, the largest being students. And how do we listen to students? Well, we listen to students through uh, surveys that we do every semester called the uh, International Student Satisfaction Survey. Uh, we also listen to students at the end of each course in student perception of learning, where you know, we ask you your thoughts uh, on the course and on the instructor. And uh, we do an annual student forum where a manager of academics meets with students uh, in the program and asks them, you know, what we can do better. Uh, we have over 3,000 employers that we work with. We listen to our employers, obviously, through uh, uh, when they take our students, but more formally through the program advisory committees. Each program has a program advisory committee that is chaired by an external member from industry. And um, the program advisory committee meets at minimum twice per year. And uh, we get a lot of thoughts from our employers on how we can make our programs even better and where our students can offer even more value to industry. Our instructors are near and dear to our heart. We have about 150. Um, our instructors are subject matter experts, but we also ask that they're great educators. So they take the, uh, we ask them to take the uh, teacher training of adult uh, program at Seneca College. It takes about a year to complete, five modules, and uh, we want to make sure that we have the best teachers and the best educators possible for our students. Our staff are awesome. You'll see a lot of them here today. Uh, they're here to assist. They're here to help you. They can't do your homework, of course, but uh, when you have issues, when you have problems, when you have questions, when you have compliments, they're willing to take them and uh, accept them. And, and uh, they're, we work very closely with our staff and our administrators to make sure that we're doing everything possible for our students uh, to make sure that this college is, uh, gets better and greater uh, each and every day, which it does. And thanks to uh, their uh, continual involvement. We have uh, about 20 different programs. Uh, we have a new program that's starting uh, this uh, this semester, which is called um, FSQT, Food uh, Service Food Safety Quality. And uh, it's, you can see it there, it's FSQT. 
Uh, these are all the programs that we uh, offer. They're in that four um, four letter, uh, you know, uh, classification from uh, advanced healthcare leadership (AHCT) to um, FSIT, uh, the Financial Services Investigative Program, which starts in fall 2022. The difference with programs that are in white uh, versus programs that are in black is that the programs in black have a, have a lab component, which is in person. So the biggest question that students are asking us, when do we get back in person? What's going to be happening? As you know, this is the fifth wave since March of 2020, uh, when we started with the pandemic, when we went on offline, online um, with our programs, we thought we'd be away for a couple weeks and it's been almost two years. So. We hope that this is the last wave. It looks like the virus is starting to run out of steam uh, as people get more vaccines. Uh, there are a lot more cases, but uh, they're not. It doesn't seem that they're as serious as they were before people were vaccinated. So we can see light at the end of the tunnel. When we get back on campus, we don't know. Uh, that's why your programs are starting off um, online. And uh, there, most of it is online. There are a few programs that are in, um, uh, there are a few uh, courses that are in person and uh, all the labs are in person. Major announcement was made yesterday um, to try and, and, and deal with the cases and uh, the outbreaks that have been happening here with the uh, Om uh, Omicron variant. And, um, you know, Shauna will, uh, you know, give you more details on that. But, Rest assured, we're here to make sure that our students are safe and our staff uh, are kept safe and uh, we will do uh, everything possible. And as we get updates, we will share them uh, with you. OK, great. So um, what are we doing for our students? Well, we do a lot and our students do a lot for us. It's a two way street. Um, without students, we wouldn't have a college. Without um, you know all our stakeholders here, our staff and administration and instructors, uh, students wouldn't get their education and be able to offer uh, the value to employers and meet the requirements for their permanent residency. So it's a two-way street. We learn from each other. One of the things that we learn is that the best thing that you can do in addition to your academic studies is to get into the proper network and uh, networking is really, really important. We have lots of different ways that you can do that. Two of the services that we offer, uh, uh, Grammarly and LinkedIn, um, it's a, a lot better than a lot of other institutions because we have these programs for our students for, uh, for free because we bought the license uh, to be able to do that. If you send out a resume or a cover letter and it's full of grammatical errors and spelling mistakes, no one's going to give you a chance. OK, so Grammarly can help you with that in interfaces with Outlook and Word. We have the premium version. Uh, please reach out to our uh, staff in the tutoring center. You have all the emails and uh, they can assist you uh, with that. Uh, LinkedIn Learning, uh, thank you to the tutoring center. Jim Dawes, who opened up this morning, and Prince Sharma. Uh, we're one of the top LinkedIn learning institutions in um, North America. Uh, LinkedIn Learning provides over 15,000 courses to our staff and students uh, where you can uh, find out different. Uh, uh, if you have questions on a certain program or, you know, uh, you know, someone asked me the other day, they said, um, you know, uh, what's uh, you know, what's this metric? They were looking at a job position and it was uh, a, a metric uh, where um, uh, they ref I forget the name right now. I'm just, it just it was on the tip of my tongue. So churn, that's the metric. They said, what is this churn? What is churn? Well, what churn is, is that when someone signs up with one company and they go to a competitor and they're going back and forth and they're switching. So it's like we have our cell phone services, Bell, Rogers, and Telus. So if you're a Rogers customer and you go to Telus, they look at that as churn, as students that are looking to... Uh, go from one of uh, the students, customers that are looking to go from one um, one company to another in a similar industry. But if you look at LinkedIn Learning, it can give you all about churn, what it is. So when there's a job ad, 
and it's asking for something and you think, what, what is this? You know what I mean? I didn't learn this in class. Type it into LinkedIn Learning. There's probably a course on it. Um, I also would suggest you get LinkedIn if you don't have it already and uh, start to network. Um, when you get LinkedIn, send me an invite. If I see that you're a Lambton College in Toronto student, I will accept you. Once I accept you, you're going to see over 9,000 students, graduates, employers, instructors, educators that are on my site, okay? And I want you to ask them directly. How's Toronto? How's Canada? How's this industry? How's Lambton? And uh, you can learn a lot from uh, the network and it's very, very important that you do that. Now, we have lots of different industry associations um, like Toronto Board of Trade, uh, Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce, Brazil Canada Chamber of Commerce. My colleague who's with us uh, today, Tamara Eswick, works in student services, uh, is not only an awesome person, but helps a lot with the Toronto Board of Trade and Student Council. Uh, there's a lot of people here that will provide you with connections that you need because you're smart. We all know that. OK, uh, you speak multiple languages. Fantastic. You've got that fire in the belly to succeed because Canada is a country that was built by immigrants. You've come thousands of kilometers away to make a difference and we want you here. But the thing is that people need to know what you can do. And the only way you can do that is through proper networking, okay? So network. Don't just wait till the last semester when you're gonna get your co-op or your, your, your co-op search in the third semester. Start from today. Start to network. Start to connect with people. Start to uh, reach out to them. And uh, these associations are, are available uh, to you. You just have to ask. Progress for Success, Tamara also takes care of that, which is a great program. So you want to go for an interview. You feel you don't have the right set of clothes. You never have a second chance to create a first impression. And, uh, you know, you, you're feeling, you know, insecure. You're thinking, oh, my God, you don't have the confidence, whatever, because you don't look the part. Well, you know what? You can put that aside. With this Dress for Success initiative, we help students. Reach out to student services, Tamara. Uh, in particular, and she can tell you all about it. The laptop program. You come here, your laptop was working in your home country. Now it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, a paperweight because it's not working right. Don't go spending fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars when you can spend two or three hundred dollars on a good refurbished laptop. Sandra Ornelas from our uh, co-op and career uh, department brought this initiative to us, working with a local company, open to students and staff where you can get a good refurbished laptop uh, for uh, a fraction of the price. So pre please reach out to us about that. Uh, we, as I had mentioned to you before, we started with one classroom. We have 60 plus classrooms in over three buildings, over 250,000 square feet. So it's a nice campus. We've made a lot of improvements uh, during this um, uh, COVID time. Because listen, in chaos, there's opportunity. There was opportunity for us to help make the campus even better. There's opportunity for you too. Never before has the government allowed you to start to study from your own country. Study online. Study and have your time credited towards your postgraduate work permit without being in Canada. So I know everyone thinks, oh yeah, what's the big deal? Whatever. It is a big deal because it was never been it was never allowed before. So please take advantage and whatever uh, of that and let uh, we'd like to let you know that, that there is an opportunity here. Lots of jobs are available, lots of companies looking, but again, you have to be able to network. You have to get in front of them. You have to know as much of the company, uh, as much about that industry or company as you can. You can only do that by proper networking and research. Now, the awards we provide to students, we recognize excellence after the first two semesters with the SESTRA award, which we um, have an event, uh, you know, Tamara helps uh, put this together. Uh, I mentioned her a lot, right? Is she a great person? She certainly is. And uh, she helps coordinate this event. She helps um, with the uh, students that have the highest GPA after the first two semesters. Now, another person that we have here, Nicholas Reyes, is uh, excellent at the um, orientation and registration 
and graduation. So he sees you right from the beginning, right through right through the end. So one of the things we do right at the end when students graduate is the President's Award. So it's students that have the highest GPA in their program are acknowledged and recognized. And the next graduation will be July 2022 or fall 2021 and winter 2022 graduates. We're hoping to have it back in person at the Metro Convention Center. Uh, we've had three graduations online because of this pandemic, uh, but let's see let's see what happens in July. Hopefully, it's in back, it's it's back in person. Lots of staff, administrators, and instructors here to assist you in any way possible. Our success is your success. Like without students, we couldn't be here. But without us, you wouldn't have the opportunity to do uh, to do what you're supposed to do and get into Canada, get a great job, get your permanent residency, become a Canadian citizen. That's the uh, that's the goal. So while studying, like I look at students when they come here, it's about si a 60 month window, okay? So 60 months is five years. Two years it takes to get your um, uh, education, and then you have a three year postgraduate work permit. We're here to help you in those 60 months, OK? So it's very important to not only get your credential, get your education, but get the right job because you need the right job to get your permanent residency. It has to uh, be part of the uh, NOC code, National Occupation Classification. Uh, we have lots of webinars and seminars uh, to help you with, um, uh, North, you'll see a name, North York Community Housing which is a member of COSTI, which is providing advice to new Canadians, immigrants, international students for the past 50 years. Uh, we have um, an immigration counselor on hand, which is, uh, her name is Helen Mihalidis, and uh, she has been with us for the past uh, four and a half years. And, uh, you know, any immigration questions you have, you need to reach out to her. Now, all our students here at Atlanta College in Toronto are international. So that means they're either on a, an approval in principle or they have a study permit or they have graduated and they have a, uh, a postgraduate work permit. Uh, so they're in one of those categories. So they're not permanent residents yet. So all along the way, you have rights and responsibilities. Please reach out to, uh, to Helen or one of our four re uh, staff that are, are RECIA trained. So what happens in Canada is that you either have to be a lawyer, an immigration counselor, or a RECIA to offer immigration advice. So if someone says to you, okay, this is what you need to do and this is what you need to, uh, uh, to have, please realize that um, uh, it's illegal to offer immigration advice unless you're a lawyer, immigration counselor, or uh, a RECIA. So RECIAs are individuals who are trained and uh, to offer advice on student study matters at post-secondary institutions. We have four members uh, that are uh, RECIAs and um, on, our, on our staff. Uh, we have new facilities that you would be proud of and uh, we're proud of and we made a lot of uh, changes here based on what students have told us through these surveys that I mentioned to you before through the student perception of learning, through the International Student Success Survey that it takes place every semester, through student forums, through our faculty with the Program Curriculum Committee, through Program Advisory Committees. You know, when people make, um, when our stakeholders make comments on what they would like to see, I would like to say, tell you that a lot of these comments have been taken into uh, consideration and have been uh, implemented at our at, at our college. So please, please, please tell us what we're doing right so we can continue doing it. Tell us what we're doing wrong so we can improve it. Tons of volunteering opportunities, um, either at registration, at, uh, at um, uh, orientation, at graduation for students that are on campus, but there's also volunteering opportunities all across Toronto, like Habitat for Humanity, like other organizations. So what volunteering does, it helps you. It helps you on your resume. When you go to an employer, they're going to ask you, tell me about yourself. 
going to say, okay, come from this country. Great. I've got an undergraduate degree from my country. Great. And what have you done in Canada? Well, I've volunteered. I've I've done co-op. I've got Canadian work experience. I've done this. I've got Canadian work experience because I've volunteered. All makes a big, big difference. So it's very, very important that you do that. Also, we have CCR co-curricular record, which can identify in your transcript that you have done various non-academic things that are over and above uh, your program of study. So position yourself in the right way. Any questions you have about that, please reach out to our tutoring center. You know they're on WhatsApp. Uh, we also have student services. Anything that we can do to uh, to assist you. We celebrate uh, diversity. Uh, lots of our staff that lots of my colleagues that are with me today were once students, graduates of the program. They're with us uh, here today, and they're all sorts of uh, positions that we have available. Uh, we have lots of different associations, and this is a glimpse of some of the associations that are uh, that are available to us, from Indo-Canada Chamber of Commerce to Toronto Board of Trade, uh, Brazil-Canada Chamber of Commerce, Canada Business Council, um, Costi, as I had mentioned to you before, lots of different clubs. We have an active student council. There's lots of ways to get involved. Again, you're smart. Again, you're in a program. Again, you have to network. You have to let people know that you're good, that you have these competencies. So just because you have an accent doesn't mean your brain has an accent. You have a lot to offer. So what our goal here is to make sure that people know your skills, people know what you're capable of doing and how we get that in front. I see lots of profiles from students on LinkedIn. Many of them are excellent. Some of them, people just have their name, no picture. You don't even know what they're all about. If you think someone's going to give you an opportunity like that, you're mistaken. You really have to work on it. You really have to showcase what you can do for, uh, for people, what you can do for employers. You've got to get your foot in the door. Once they see what you have to offer, then more opportunities will open up. If you want to see in person what I'm saying, get into LinkedIn. Look at uh, people that are on my site that are graduates. Ask them about their journey and they'll tell you. Our student council is awesome. Uh, Tamara, Prince, and Nell are the, are the liaisons between the college and the council. Lots of different events uh, that, that have been done over the last uh, many years have, have been inspired by student council and we brought them to fruition here at the college um, because this is something that students wanted to do and this is something that they feel that would make uh, make a difference and it has so please look at student council on instagram facebook linkedin reach out there's emails get involved and and uh, it's really really important especially in your first semester that you are in right now you can reach out in any way possible in student council. We've got so many people here to help, it's it's incredible. But the mother only feeds the baby that cries. You've got to put your hand up. You've got to say, hey, listen, you know what? I need a job. I want to be in this industry. I want to do this. I want to do that. Do it sooner than later. Okay. When it's you know almost at the end and then you know students are scrambling for jobs without the network, it's hard to be able to, to place them. But if you do it at the beginning and start to find out, start to get the experience from other people, what they've done, and you have to listen to the right people. There are negative people out there. There are proactive people. Myself, I try to keep proactive people in my life because I learn from them. And um, the thing is that I, I need you to do the uh, the same. So there are there is uh, positive and negative press out there all the time. Find out what's going on, you know, with the positive people. Find out from people's experiences. Look for realists that have been through the program and they can assist you in any way possible. Okay, so that's what I suggest to you. So next slide that we're looking at. Um, okay, so if you can advance it to the next slide, please. That would be great.
I wish I could do it myself. I I I, I can't move it to the next part. So the thing is that um, sorry, Michael. I'm just um, I'm just trying to get in touch with Meg. I don't know if maybe she's not able to advance that slide, but I'm just getting in touch with her. Okay, so we're almost at the end here. I just wanted to show you a couple shots of the campus and ways that you can access more pictures of our staff, students, and facilities on uh, OneDrive, and um, that's that's available to you. And um, yeah, so. Welcome, welcome to Lenten College in Toronto. As you can see, we have lots of resources here to assist you. Please tell us what we can do to help. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much, Michael. Um, we do apologize for some technical difficulties that we are having. We will be getting um, this aspect of the of the PowerPoint going going very soon. Um, I don't. Is it OK for you, Sharna, to go ahead and do the overview while we yep. get the slides up and going? OK, thank you very much. So right now we're going to have Sharna talking, giving us an overview of our orientation. And thereafter, we'll have Tamara, who will be talking about sexual violence. At this time, I hand over to Sharna. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We're going to try to get the slide deck going again. Um, but in the meantime, um, my name is Shauna Sheldon and um, uh, sorry, I said good morning, but it could be evening or afternoon as well. Um, but good day to everyone. My name is Shauna Sheldon and I head up the quality assurance team at Lambton College in Toronto. I'm also part of this team that's responsible for supporting you through your orientation. Right now I'm putting on my uh, Nicholas Reyes hat um, and I'm filling in for him um, as the orientation coordinator. Uh, he was unable to join us today, but um, I will uh, give you a very quick overview of the schedule for this week. Um, and maybe what we'll do is we'll turn things back to Michael at the end um, so that we can go through the last few slides, but I'm gonna just uh, jump into the schedule. Um, it's great that we have w over 800 students here today, which is um, fantastic. Oh, the schedule is up at the top, but that's good too. <laughs> um, so the, um, the, we have 800, um, over 800 students here today. Um, so no excuses for missing any of the other sessions this week. Uh, this is just the meet and greet for everyone, for you to meet the team, the team that's responsible for supporting you through this. Um, we have some booster sessions planned for you this week. So um, on Wednesday, we have student services, Canadian culture, uh, sexual violence, mental health, and uh, vaccination and travel. Um, so we'll tell you a, a little bit more, a little bit about those topics today, but we're going to give you uh, more information on those topics on Wednesday, January 5th. Um, same type of um, format. So you'll come to the MS Teams um, room and um, join us for uh, again an hour and a half um, and we will go through those topics. Then on Thursday we have um, our immigration consultant. Michael mentioned Helen earlier. Uh, so we have our immigration consultant joining us on Thursday and we have Peter who is representing our co-op team. So if you're in a co-op program, it's great for you if you can attend that session and he will give you all of the ins and outs of co-op. Um, again, we'll give you a little bit of a sneak at that today. Uh, so January 6th for immigration and co-op and then on Friday January 7th we're going to cover academic integrity and student success um, and then we're going to be doing a game at the end of that session for prizes so make sure that you're paying attention to all of the sessions this week um, so that you have a, a, an opportunity to win a prize on Friday and then um, we are also planning a session from 11 till 12 uh, from our academic integrity officer who's also here with us today he's going to introduce himself in just a bit um, but that session is a great session for you to attend if you're learning um, uh, APA documentation formatting and how to research properly and how to avoid any plagiarism. So it's a great session for you to attend. Um, so I encourage you to do that. So uh, that's the schedule for the week. Um, and um, hopefully uh, you'll get a chance to meet Nicholas at one of the sessions later this week. Unfortunately, he's feeling a little under the weather. Um, but, um, we hope that he can join us at some point. Um, Jint, I don't know how you want to go from here, if you want to move on to student services or if you want to let um, Michael finish up his bit, um, but I will turn things over to you. 
Okay, we could just have Michael finish up and then we'll turn over to Tamara, who will do sexual violence, and then we'll go to Meg, who will do Canadian culture. So that is the other. We're going to have our director just finishing up his, his presentation. Then we'll turn over to Tamara and then Meg will go thereafter. Thank you. Michael, it's back over to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Gemma. Thanks, Shauna. I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for getting the slides back up. Um, th this is what the campus looks like. Uh, this is our uh, main building, 265, uh, 271 York Glen, and 259. So we have three buildings centrally located in the, in the uh, greater Toronto area um, at uh, Highway 404 and, and Shepherd, uh, served by a subway and two bus lines. So we're very, very easy to, uh, to, uh, to get to. So um, this is uh, what you can see. Our campus uh, is open. It has a limited um, um, it has a limited uh, access right now because of uh, COVID. You need to be fully vaccinated to come see us uh, on campus or do your labs if you happen to be in Canada. If not, we look forward to seeing you uh, when uh, when you arrive. Now, when will we get back on campus? That's a question that everyone has. Um, once we get more information. Uh, we will uh, be able to share that with you. So is it later on in the winter semester? Is it the start of the summer semester in May? When we fully open up, we'll, uh, we'll, keep, you, uh, we'll keep you posted. Okay, so the next slide. Um, now, if you want to see some more pictures uh, of our campus, of our students, of our staff, there's a OneDrive link here. So if we copy that link in the chat box and Students can have access to it. That would be uh, that would be great, and uh, you can see a little bit more about what we're uh, all about. And next slide, please. Thank you. And that's the end of the uh, the presentation. And I wanted to thank uh, each and every one of you uh, for attending uh, today as our students. Uh, we're going to be together for the next two years. Get to know these people that are my colleagues that are awesome. Uh, that are here to help you as I am too. And we want to make sure that your journey here is as uh, pleasant as possible. There's tons and tons and tons of resources to assist you. Please put your hand up for they to assist you. Thank you very much. I um, wish you a pleasant uh, uh, morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you're at. And uh, I, we look forward to seeing you in person when we get back on uh, when we get back on campus. So thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamara Estwick, and I'm one of five student services advisors at LCIT. I'll be delivering a, present, a short presentation on student services, as well as the importance of our sexual violence committee and, and its initiatives for students. So what is student services? What do we do? Uh, student services is the college uh, information hub. So any questions that students may have, they don't know who to go to, they don't know who to email. Um, we ask you all to connect with us first. You can send us an email. And if we don't have the answer to any of your questions, we will refer you to the appropriate staff member or department or a community resources that can support you based on your queries. Uh, we connect students to services they need to achieve academic success through information, advisement, and counseling, and referral. But I'd also expand that to say that we um, provide, um, you know, connections to students not only for their academic success, but their personal success, because they both intertwine. Um, so if you're dealing with any personal issues that you, you know, need additional supports, you can definitely reach out to us and we can definitely assist. So how do you contact us? You can send one email through the ticketing system. You'd send it to student services at sestercollege.com. I emphasize one email because uh, we receive a lot of emails from 6,000 plus students. So please give us time to respond. We can respond to you within one to five business days. So business days is from Monday to Friday. We are not available, unfortunately, on the weekend. So please allow 
one to five business days for a response to your email. If the fifth business day has passed, uh, you can send a follow up email, but please only send one email. So tomorrow I will be delivering um, a thorough presentation on student services as well as the technology that you'll be using um, at the college to access pertinent information that you require. Um, before I move on to the next slide, I just want to make a brief announcement based on what Michael said earlier today in his presentation talking about student council. As I supervise student council, so if you all have access to your Moodle accounts, there is a post uh, for that we're recruiting student council members for the 2022 year. Uh, the deadline to submit an application will be on Friday at noon, which is 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested in being part of the college, Michael talked about volunteering, talked about student council and other student initiatives, please refer to the posts on Moodle for more information. Additionally, there is a Kahoot game on Friday. I'm probably, you probably will be doing some orientation stuff on Friday as well. The Kahoot game is on a country profile that we've been doing in student council in the 2021 year. If you're interested in participating again, you can go to Moodle and learn more information about this game and then you can connect with us on Friday at 5 p.m. And my colleague Courtney Minos is not here today, so I'll be delivering the brief presentation on sexual violence and why it's super important at LCIT. Uh, there are three committee members who are all staff. One is Courtney Mino, she is a student services advisor, as well as myself and my colleague, Victoria Hartsius. So there are three of us who are part of this committee who um, gauge different emails that we receive from students, different initiatives, different things that are going on, not only in the, the, the college community, but in public that affect students. So we are definitely here to support you. And we are about promoting healthy and safe relationships for both women and men assuring that our students never feel alone. Uh, it, it's OK to ask for help, as Michael mentioned. Please ask for help. You, you know, we all need help. We don't do we don't become successful on our own. It's always someone else who's there to give us a hand to assist us. So please don't feel don't feel afraid to ask for help. We're going to talk about the importance of consent. Um, advocacy and, uh, and awareness and discuss abuse can be present whether you are in a relationship with someone or not. So abuse can be defined in many ways, physical, sexual, um, you know, mental abuse. These things are super important within the Canadian context and within the college and, and certain things that occur in Canadian society um, is not tolerated. So when we talk about sexual violence, we break down the definitions and, and the things that are tolerable and intolerable. And again, a thorough presentation will be delivered tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, in regards to sexual violence, what that means and how that impacts uh, LCIT students, faculty and staff. Awesome, thank you so much, Tamara. So my name is Meg, just so everybody knows. I'm the one that's uh, running the event in the background here, but I put myself on camera just for the fact. So if you see team meeting, my name is actually Meg Desmond and I'm gonna be delivering on Canadian culture today. So in the session, which will also be on Wednesday, we will cover what is Canadian culture. So, uh, you know, what's it going to be like when you arrive here in Canada, if this is your first time? What are some of the expectations and general cust uh, practices and customs that we have? Uh, we're also going to look at etiquette. So we're going to have some fun examples of what you would do in different scenarios and how etiquette might vary in Canada compared to your home country or other countries where you've been in the past. We're also going to look at communication, body language and personal space. So again, this kind of ties into etiquette, might be a little different in the countries that you're from, in your home countries, from the way that it is in Canada. Uh, and especially when we are in the physical classroom, these things are going to come into play. So super important to know some of the communication and body language practices that are common in Canada. And finally, this is a big one. We're going to talk about dealing with culture shock. 
So culture shock is completely normal, something that everybody goes through or, or most of us end up going through at some point in our lives. And we're also going to talk about some of the support. So not just, you know, what is culture shock? Why might you experience it? But what are the supports that we have at the college to help you deal with that if you are experiencing culture shock while you're in Canada? So that's a little overview of what that session will cover. Again, it'll be on Wednesday, January 5th, starting at 9 a.m. And that's basically it for me. So I will pass it on to Shauna. Good. Uh, and welcome back to me, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say good morning, but I've already said my greeting. Um, this again, this is um, a se section that uh, Courtney, my colleague Courtney, um, normally covers, but um, I'm going to very quickly introduce you to um, the mental health members. Um, so we, we um, have a strong commitment to supporting students and faculty and staff through any issues around mental health. Um, we take this these matters very seriously. We have a committee that um, is responsible for the ongoing support of students and um, awareness of the supports that are available. Um, so the members of that committee are Courtney, who chairs that, uh, that team, and then Jacqueline, Prince, Jint, and another Courtney. Um, so these are the five committee members uh, for the Mental Health Committee. Courtney's going to tell you a little bit more about the this um, this committee tomorrow at the uh, Wednesday session. Um, if she's unable to make it, um, we will definitely uh, cover that piece off. But um, we did want to introduce you to the the committee and also just um, what that committee is responsible for doing. So um, that committee is responsible for promoting uh, the mental health uh, for students and staff. Um, and to do that, there's a number of different sessions that they put on. Um, I know from a uh, professional development, I also um, am responsible, responsible for the professional development of our faculty team. And um, Courtney and, um, and Victoria are often involved in uh, professional development activities around supporting our faculty. I know that they do a lot for our staff and our students as well. Um, they host circles once a month for student support. Um, they uh, provide both uh, academic and personal counseling for students. Um, they also host Wellness Wednesdays. So you'll hear a lot about uh, the Wellness Wednesdays uh, through Moodle. Uh, Tamara's going to tell you tomorrow a little bit more about how you get access to Moodle. Um, but when you're in Moodle, um, you'll see on the home page, we use that. Um, as a communication channel for all of the events that are happening and um, one of the um, the uh, continuous communication pieces that you'll see on there is uh, the Wellness Wednesdays and I know that there's certain themes that she covers in the uh, Wellness Wednesdays so uh, keep your eye out for those and then uh, lastly um, all the information that you need to know about the uh, mental health team is available to you on Moodle so uh, continue to follow Moodle uh, that's where you'll get all the information about any of the events that are planned and um, the ways that you can get in touch with um, the committee members. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that this slide deck is um, going to be available to everyone at the end of the week. Uh, so I'll be putting that, speaking of Moodle, I'll be posting the recording from yesterday's session in Moodle and you'll have access to the slide deck. So you uh, you can either take pictures of the emails that are um, email addresses that are shown on the screen right now, or you can get access to the slide deck on uh, Friday when I, when I post it. Um, so again, uh, we got a lot to cover on Wednesday, but on Wednesday the 5th, we will be covering the mental health session. Um, and if it's not Courtney, uh, you good hand Tamara and uh, she will cover that off um, to give you more information about um, the mental health committee. And this next section is um, my, um, my forte, I guess. Um, so travel vaccination and campus access. Um, in addition to heading up uh, QA, I, um, I'm the COVID readiness officer at the college um, uh, and have been since um, the pandemic, uh, the, the, all of the changes that um, have taken place at the college since March 2020. Um, 
We have had a quarantine requirement since November of 2020 when um, our DLI readiness, uh, so Designated Learning Institution Readiness Plan, was approved uh, by the federal government. Um, and so we have been supporting students in their travel to Canada since that time. Um, a lot of things have changed since then, um, and we just adjust as uh, we are required to follow all of the protocols that are uh, mandated by the various levels of government. Um, so um, the biggest change was on July 5th when the government announced that there's a fully vaccinated quarantine exemption available to our students. And what we have found is that most students qualify for this fully vaccinated quarantine exemption. Um, but if you do not and you do plan on traveling to Canada, you either will uh, issue a ticket through the ticketing system. You've been hearing a lot about this ticketing system today um, so that you'll see um, the ticketing system is available to you on the Moodle homepage in that uh, right column of the screen. Um, but you will issue a ticket for either a quarantine exemption or a quarantine package, depending on what uh, situation you're in. Um, starting on January 15th, uh, so not far from now, everyone must be vaccinated. So that's another big change. Um, so just be prepared for the fact that you will not be able to travel into Canada unless you are fully vaccinated, meaning two doses of the vaccines that are approved by Health Canada. And there are now actually seven vaccines that have been approved, but um, I will spend a little bit more time on that uh, tomorrow. Um, so the approved vaccines have been expanded again. Um, that happened on November 30th. Um, and they are vaccines that are not only approved by um, uh, the World Health Organization, but they have now been adopted by Canada. We had four that we were administering here in Canada, but then again, as I mentioned, we, were, we expanded that to uh, three more um, approved by the World Health Organization back on November 30th, meaning now there are seven vaccines that are approved, uh, which is great news for a lot of our students because there are some vaccines that are available in other countries that weren't available here in Canada. Um, then I mentioned the January 15th date, August 31st, many of you who have been paying attention to the uh, announcements that have been made uh, regarding um, immigration um, and, um, and your, um, your student visa and uh, all of the, the uh, complications around that, um, IRCC did make an announcement on August 31st indicating that your PGWP would not be impacted if you traveled um, I'm sorry, August 31st is the date, but it, that announcement was made on November 26th. Um, but August 31st um, the, um, is the date that you are, you must be here, um, according to IRCC. But um, what we are encouraging students to do is pay attention to Moodle because we do not know what the deliver model, delivery model is for May 2022. So um, although um, all of our term one students can attend their classes remotely right now, so that's fine, you can uh, attend your class home country and you know, there are a lot of, we know that there are a lot of travel restrictions in place right now, so um, we recognize that, IRCC recognizes that as well, uh, but just keep in mind that there are two sets of requirements. One is what IRCC requires of students, and then the other is what the college requires of students. You may have a program that requires you to be in Canada, to be on campus as of May. So and and because you know it's the situation is kind of fluid, we don't know what to expect in um, May. We just want to make sure that students are here when they can get here. Um, some students that are in the room today will be required to be here on campus in May. Michael mentioned earlier that we have a number of programs that have lab components. Those those programs are, are being delivered on campus now, even though there are a lot of restrictions in place. We still have um, labs running on campus. Now they don't affect you in term one, which is who we have here today. But if you're in, um, you, when you're going into term two, there's a very good chance that you will be required to be on campus um, in May, and it will likely affect other programs, programs that don't necessarily have a lab component. So just pay attention to what uh, the information that you're getting through Moodle. You will be alerted of your um, of the uh, requirements uh, as we uh, figure out what the delivery model is for your program. But um, just just make sure that you're you're staying on top of that. 
Next slide. Um, yep, thank you. So uh, uh, the moral of this story is, first off, get vaccinated because the only way you can travel is if you are vaccinated. So that's two vaccines at this point. Although we are administering the booster now, the third vaccine, um, there is uh, technically at this point, um, fully vaccinated is really the first two doses. So get your two doses of the vaccine um, so that you can travel. Uh, and the other thing was this past year is that you should travel when you can. Uh, the, there are a number of restrictions that we have absolutely no control over. So we had a lot of students who put off their travel this past summer um, or maybe earlier than the summer because some travel restrictions were implemented in uh, uh, sorry, April of um, 2021. So when that happened, a lot of students who thought they didn't have to be here, did not travel. Um, and so then they were stuck. They were not able to get here in time for their labs. So then they're now uh, playing catch up to try to get those labs in. So just be aware that because the situation is kind of, you know, well, it's fluid and also out of our control, travel when you can. And, you know, there's a good chance that you'll be able to, I know it's probably very difficult to travel right now, um, but, you know, travel when you can, maybe in February or March, so that if your program is being delivered on campus in May, you're here and you are not uh, be impacted by any restrictions that may or may not be in place in May. So that's, um, that's my advice to you. Uh, next slide. And again, I did mention that we have a lot to cover on Wednesday, but um, on January 5th, we will be covering travel vaccinations and campus access as well. Um, so I'll spend a little bit more time giving you some of the ins and outs of that um, when we meet on Wednesday. So make sure you join us for that session at uh, nine o'clock on Wednesday. That's it for me. Now we don't have Helen with us today. I'm happy to cover off Helen's section. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so um, as Michael mentioned at the outset, um, we do have an immigration consultant. She is amazing um, and she is available to students to provide you with the support that you may need. I answer any of question, any questions that you may have um, about your um, your uh, study visa or your PGWP or any of that stuff. She's the best person to. Um, she is a Canadian immigration counselor um, and she has 20 years of experience in the Canadian immigration industry as well as lots of knowledge of Canadian of the education system. Um, she does specialize in temporary and permanent residence app applications so she is awesome um, and she is readily available to um, to answer any questions that you um, may have about your situation. Um, she also has a regular open um, office hours so you can book a, a time to meet with her. Um, she has um, had, she's, this is her profile, she's had the privilege of traveling to various countries around the world where she has conducted seminars and information sessions to young and eager individuals that want to start a new life in Canada and to make Canada their next destination. So that's this group of people. Um, and I encourage you, if you have any questions about your immigration, uh, your situation, uh, to reach out to her email address is a few slides down. So um, if you could just go to the next slide. Oh, there we go. So um, her areas of expertise are, um, and actually I probably, I could just jump here. Okay, so study uh, permits. Um, your postgraduate work permit, PGWP, um, extensions and change of status, restorations, permanent residence, um, express entry and PNP, uh, your visitor visa, spousal sponsorships. We do have a lot of students who are married and coming here. Um, spousal open work permits, uh, LMIA and work permits and super visa for parents and grad, uh, grandparents. Um, she is going to be um, doing her session, the booster session on January 6th, again, nine o'clock. Um, so she will be covering keeping track and being diligent about your immigration status. Uh, I know the last probably where she gets 90% of the questions from students. Uh, she'll talk about passports, study permits, work permits, entry visa. Um, if you need to extend any of your um, 
your visas, then uh, she will uh, spend some a little bit of time on that. Restoration status, replacement of lost or stolen documents. She's going to spend a little bit of time on that. Uh, inviting family members and finally permanent residence, because we know that that's um, what many of our students are seeking as the end goal. So she will spend a little bit of time on all of those topics in about 40 minutes on uh, Thursday. So again, Thursday, January 6th at 9 a.m. Um, join us um, and Helen will be at the session and um, she will also give, um, I don't know if we have her, no, I don't think her email address is here, but she will also give her contact information at that session. It's also in the slide deck um, that I have, and actually um, in the link, um, the recording link from the session yesterday, her email address is in there. So um, feel free to grab that uh, at the end of the week when I post it on Moodle. Um, and um, hopefully you can join us on Thursday uh, to get any questions um, that you have about uh, immigration answered. Um, and I'm going to just run through um, Peter's se section here as well. Um, Unless we have Peter, was he able to join us? No, he's not able to no, join us. I don't think so. Okay. Yes. So, he's um, the audience, but not with us. He's in the audience. So I'm sure he'll let me know if I make any mistakes. I'm sorry, Peter. I'm going to do my best. But Peter is uh, one of our co op and career advisors. Um, and you can see on the screen now that he is responsible for BMHT, CSAT, and FPWT. So if you are a student in any of these programs, you have the distinct plan to work with Peter. Um, but we do have five uh, co-op and career advisors. Uh, Brian is responsible for um, providing um, support to CCBT and C uh, SCMT. Uh, Pamela um, heads up the uh, support for MADT, MMDT, MMPT, PMIT, and PMLT. Uh, you'll get used to learning the acronyms here at the college, but I'm sure for those of you, uh, you recognize your own program there. Um, I mentioned Peter and then Sandra. Um, she is uh, responsible for AIMT, OHST, and QEMT. And then Diana is responsible for BMAT, CP, CT, CPMT. So if you need to reach out to a co-op and career advisor, you can reach out directly to your designated career advisor um, but also note if you don't know you can reach out to career at sestarcollege.com and it will direct to the right person make sure that when you are looking for um, information to uh, state your name your student number and the program in which uh, you are in whenever you're contacting uh, anyone in the in the uh, co-op and career department um, so uh, we keep talking about these video chat sessions. So um, thank you, Peter, for putting this in the slides. Um, so there are uh, video chat sessions that are uh, hosted by our student services team, um, as well as uh, Helen, the immigration consultant. She also hosts some of these uh, video chats. Um, and co-op, the co-op team is also responsible for joining the um, the video chats on. Um, every day actually Mondays from 11 till 1, Tuesdays from 9 till 10, Wednesdays from 3 till 5, Thursdays from 1 till 3 and Friday from 3 till 5 um, and uh, you'll get a chance to meet any of the all, any of the the uh, co-op and career advisors that are in uh, that are listed there. Um, so you'll be joining through an Adobe Connect room um, and that the link is there at the top of the slide. That same link is used for all of the video chat sessions. So you go in, uh, you might be sitting in the lobby for a bit, but eventually you'll be admitted into the room and uh, someone will be there to answer any of your questions. Again, make sure that you state your name, student number and uh, program whenever you're contacting any of the co-op and uh, career advisors. So um, the other amazing thing about our co-op and career team is that they offer ad additional services to everyone. So even if you're not in a co-op program, um, you can book a one-on-one -on -one appointment with a co-op and career advisor uh, for resume critiquing, cover letter critiquing, job search assistance, online presence feedback, interview preparation, and mock interviews. This is a fantastic service for you. Um, and what it does mean 
is that you're going to get really good advice when you're seeking employment here in Canada, which I suspect you all are going to be uh, looking for. So um, take advantage of that service that um, that our co-op and career advisors uh, can provide to you. And um, and um, th that'll give you your best chance at, um, at successfully landing a, a job that is uh, that is good for you. Um, you can work 20 hours uh, while you're um, in school. So um, that is um, that is something that uh, a lot of our students do once they uh, arrive here in Canada. Um, this is just an overview of what the advisors do. So advisors provide career and employment development services and resources for co-op students, including assistance with resumes, cover letters and other job search documents, as I already mentioned. Um, Assistance with interview techniques for work term recruitment. As, uh, assessment of the suitability of work term employment opportunities. So that's the support that they give to the co-op students when they're um, getting ready for their uh, work term. And then they monitor your co-op work term so that they can continue to provide you with support. They keep in touch with your employer. They want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your co-op experience. Um, and then they also offer ongoing development and delivery um, through the CPP 1001, uh, sorry, the ongoing development through the delivery of the uh, CPP 1001 co-op preparation course. So that is a course that is mandatory for all co-op students. What it does is it gives you uh, an opportunity to learn about how to sell yourself, how to um, how to create the optimal resume, how to um, uh, present yourself in an interview situation, um, how to, I know that LinkedIn, getting your LinkedIn learning or your LinkedIn profile um, so that it is uh, giving you opportunities for jobs as well. So lots of great learning you can get from that CP1001. Um, they also conduct classroom visits for term one and term three co-op students. So you may be visited by uh, one of the co-op career and career advisors in the coming uh few weeks as you're all in term one. Um, so they'll come and visit your virtual classroom. Um, and then they also offer career services, uh, which we already covered, um, and that those career services are offered to everyone. And then uh, lastly, uh, make sure that if you are looking for um, some support through the co-op and career team, uh, that you book a one on one appointment with, uh, through the My Career. Uh, there will be information on that on Thursday when uh, you and when you join Peter's session, he will give you the ins and outs of um, how you can book those appointments. So again, say the date and time. Peter will be joining us on Thursday, January 6th. We'll make sure that he is able. He really wanted to join us today. He was having difficulty, so we'll make sure that he is here on Thursday. Um, and hopefully, Peter, I did, uh, I, I represented you well, um, and um, I encourage everyone to join us on Thursday, whether you're in a co-op program or not. There's lots that you can learn from that session on Thursday from Peter. He's the expert in this area, so I hope you can join us. OK, thank you so very much, Shauna. You have really done a lot this morning and I really appreciate it. And of course, our students, they will be more than happy to attend these sessions to hear more about all the wonderful things that we are having here. We are going to go now to Mark, um, who will talk about academic integrity. And uh, of course, thereafter, yours truly will talk about the tutoring services that we have here. Mark, it is over to you. I cannot hear Mark really. Can you all hear Mark? Mark? Yeah, Mark, Mark is very quiet. Uh, uh, How about uh, better? Perfect. 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 Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, thank you so much for uh, everybody today. Thank you for coming in and good day to all of you. My name is Mark Gonzalez. I'm the Academic Integrity Officer of the school. So uh, today I'm just trying to uh, give you a little bit of an advertisement for our awesome session happening on Friday. So um, 
my job really consists of dealing with academic dishonesty on on most cases, but really what the way I'd like to think about it is we're dealing with academic honesty, trying to make sure that uh, the stuff that you contribute and hand in and submit on a daily basis to your courses are actually coming from your brain, coming from you, and really is a reflection of what you can do as a student. So. Um, we're going to be looking at a few different things together on Friday in, in spe like specifically we're looking at um, issues of plagiarism, trying to avoid plagiarism, uh, trying to make sure that you know uh, you are being honest in what you submit. Uh, I'm sure you're all very great students and we just want to make sure that what you hand into us is really coming from you. And this can be a bit of an issue sometimes because some people may not even be really aware of what plagiarism means and what it constitutes. So we're going to do our best to clarify that for you on Friday. So specifically, we are looking at, you know, issues of academic honesty, trying to make sure that you are not plagiarizing. If you are copying materials from the internet, uh, that happens sometimes with research, and it's really good to know how to do research correctly, um, how to incorporate research into your documents the right way. Um, if you ever have any kind of tests, assignments, uh, essays in particular, uh, those will require specifically, you know, um, submitting things correctly. So we are looking at, for example, APA documentation. That's going to be a really big part of Friday's session as well. Uh, if you don't know what APA is, perfect time to attend because we're going to go through all the details of it and uh, we're going to do our best to really explain it so that you know what your teachers expect when you submit your documents and how to really protect yourself from any accusation of plagiarism too because if you're submitting things with the correct documentation following APA you'll never run into these problems so um um, yeah, that, that's basically what we're going to be taking a look at, uh, and I really hope that you can attend with us on Friday. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be exciting. You're going to be on the edge of your seat, and <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, we'll be there at 9 a.m. Um, I'll be at the tail end of the 9 a.m. session, but you can stick around at 11 o'clock where we're going to go through in more detail the APA documentation guide together, uh, how to submit something with Turnitin. Uh, that's the program that we use to check for like similarity and plagiarism stuff, and um, yeah, that, that's basically it. So, you know, thank you very much for listening. And Shauna, I'll pass it back to you if you have anything else to add. No, I think you covered it perfectly. Thanks, Mark. Uh, are you are you muted? I don't know. I, I, oh. I can't hear anything. Oh, sorry. Oh, you can't Continue. hear? Oh, no, I was just saying, yeah, I think you covered everything perfectly. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. That was really good. I will just go through quickly. My name is Jim Dawes. Um, I'm one of the members of the Tutoring Center team. With me is Prince Sharma. Um, he will be with me when I do the presentation on, on, on Friday. We are going to talk about some of the support programs that we have within We Care, Writing Language Center, and the Tutoring Center. These are all support programs that are here at the college and it is geared towards supporting you not only academically but emotionally and socially and culturally also. The Tutoring Centre, our tutors are peer tutors, meaning that they have gone through the programme already and they will be more than willing and they have the expertise to help you to, to go through all, all of that programme. We're going to talk about the Writing Language Centre, how it will help you Mark just spoke about APA and to just to make sure that you understand what you need to do. The Writing Language Center will assist you further in you understanding how to communicate both in the oral language and in the written language. We care, you will know about it as we want all of you to get on board through Microsoft Teams. Next slide. We have our Moodle, and of course, you will be hearing much more about Moodle tomorrow. It is our go-to um, area for getting onto many different platforms. One of them is the Tutoring Center and the Writing Language Center. We will be showing you how to use this link to book an appointment with us at the Writing Language Center and at the Tutoring Center. So it will be a very simplified five step stage and it is like buying something on Amazon. So it would be very, very, very useful to you. Next slide. You can always contact us at 
we care at sestercollege.com or the tutoring center. Remember, the purpose of our student support is to make sure that your experience here at Lambton College Toronto is one that you will always remember. And while you're going through, you know that our We Care partners who will be there to support you and to let you feel welcome as part of the Lambton College family and our tutors that will be more than happy to go through information with you and to help you go through the most difficult period of your studies. We'll be more than happy to have you and make sure that you are there, the Writing Language Center, the Tutoring Center. Please contact us at any of these. Write these emails down. You will need them at some point. So make sure that you are with us. As I said, student success session. You are all successful students. We just want you to be more successful than you are. So check us out this Friday, January 7th at 9 a.m. Save that date. We will see you there. So at this time, we're going to just go into the week schedule and uh, it's just housekeeping. And uh, of course, for this week, Monday, which is um, two days ago, we have done meet and greet today. We have been doing that. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday, we're going to have student services, Canadian culture, sexual violence, mental health, and travel vaccination. Make sure that you are there. It will be on MS Teams. And I know that this is one of the best platforms because you're going to be using it throughout your time here at Lambton College Toronto. So make sure that you download that app. You also will be using it for different activities too. On Thursday, we're going to have immigration and co-op. It may just seem to be two, but there's so much information, important information, that we just want to make sure that we do not have it with other items so that you know what to do going forward. And on Friday, January 7th, academic integrity and student success. And guess what? Fun and games. I'm going to have prizes. So make sure that you are there. Make sure that you are there for the game prize, but more importantly, for the APA workshop. And this is for every student. Remember, even after leaving Lambton College, you'll be going out there in the workplace, whether you're doing research, whether you have to present a, a presentation or a position paper, you will need these basic information on how to make sure that you represent yourself, represent your college to make sure that you go to the next level. APA workshop is one of those foundation sessions that you want to be at to, to go forward. So make sure you are all in attendance to so see you there on MS Teams. Of course, if you have any questions, online orientation and virtual registration, these are the emails. These are the go to emails. Um, if anything, you can always take a quick, a quick um, screenshot of all of these emails that, that you see here. We will be providing you with this with these emails again, but just for your own um, ease and ease, you can always have this screenshot done. Academic Integrity Tutoring Center, Co-op and Careers, Immigration, so the permit Helen. And of course, we have quarantine at sestercollege.com. Make sure that you have all of these go to emails because at times this is the best way to get information as quickly as possible. So, of course, if you have any question, feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to answer your questions within 72 hours. So, and Jim, I was just going to add um, just a reminder that um, the session that we ran today. Um, we ran it yesterday as well. We recorded it in Adobe Connect. Adobe Connect is the platform in which you'll be attending all of your classes. So watch Moodle for the links to your classes. Um, maybe equally importantly, I was going to say more importantly, um, watch for an email for, or um, a post in Moodle 
from me. Um, I'll be putting that post on Friday. It's the recording of yesterday's session, so it's essentially the same thing we covered today, but in Adobe Connect, you can get access to all of the slide decks that are going to be covered throughout the week, all of the resources that are being made available to all students through um, the week in all of our sessions, and also all of the contact information that you need for um, getting in touch with any of the folks that you're going to be working with or being supported by um, throughout this week of orientation. So watch for that link. It'll be on Friday, uh, shortly after the APA session. It's a recording of that one hour, one hour and 15 minute session yesterday, and, um, and it'll have all that information in it for you. So that's it for me, sorry. Okay, no worries. All right, so I think we are at the end of today's presentation. On behalf of all of our presenters today and those who will be hearing tomorrow up until Friday, we want to thank you students for your time. I know that for some of you it is very late, so I want to thank you very much for listening to us. We want to wish you all the best going forward. You are now a part of our family and as part of family we want to take care of each other and this is the best way we can do by giving you the information that is out there. So until then, take care. Make sure that you have all these time and dates for all these sessions. Uh, make sure that you have it um, and make sure that you are here tomorrow. We will be more than happy to have you again. As, as I said, once you have family, we are more than happy to have you as many times as possible. So take care. See you and all the best going forward.